<laughs> but what is it that makes one brain cleverer than another in the first place? Well, to find out if there is something in the way their brain is structured that sets them apart, I enlisted the help of a famously clever chap. Bobby Seagull is someone who has proved his intelligence beyond doubt. He's a mathematician, author, teacher, and University Challenge semi-finalist. Emmanuel Seagull. GDP. Correct. Emmanuel Seagull. A dome? A dome is correct, yes. You're a pretty smart guy, Bobby. Reasonably. Reasonably. I'm kind of curious. I wonder whether it's something about your brain that makes you different. I've always thought it's about my character, my spirit. My determination that's got me places. Maybe you're wired differently. <laughs> I hope, that. maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> to find out whether clever brains are different, Bobby is going to have his brain scanned. This will take about 25 minutes. Experts at the University of Edinburgh have been studying thousands of brains, searching for anything that might make some cleverer or faster than others. OK, we're just going to start scanning and it's going to get very noisy. Are clever brains bigger? Are they wired differently? Are you all right there? Revealing the secrets of Bobby's intelligence is Dr Simon Cox. Your brain volume is extremely average, oh. um, if not <laughs> okay. a little bit lower so than, lower than average. Lower than uh, average? A little bit. A little bit. Small brain. That's correct, yes. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Bit. Clearly, when it comes to intelligence, brain size isn't everything. But is there something in Bobby's scans that could help to explain why his brain works so well? This is a really nice example of the grey matter, these grey areas around the outside of the brain here, which is where the majority of, of our brain cells sit. Bobby's got a very healthy brain, nicely filled out into the, into the skull. Small brain, but densely packed. That's <laughs> why he's keeping all of his quiz knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in the, in the grey table, matter. astronomy. Yeah, and, and where, where all the kind of the compu computation happens as well. It seems that individuals that have more grey matter have slightly higher cognitive um, abilities. But Simon's research has shown that it's not just having more grey matter that's important. Crucial to the speed of thinking is another part of the brain, the white matter. The white matter of the brain, so you can see it here. The actual white stuff. Is the, exactly right, the actual white stuff houses all of the diverse connections across all of these different areas of the brain. A more detailed scan of Bobby's white matter shows that it's made up of a complex network of connections, or neural pathways. These are routes between different areas of the brain and how the information is being uh, transmitted along them from one area to the next. So to give you an idea of the scale here, um, each one of these little lines, um, there are about 50,000 or so in this um, scan that we've, we've identified, but there are hundreds of billions of actual connections in your brain. They would stretch four times around the Earth. It's not just the volume of connections that matters. What's crucial is how well signals travel along these routes. And there's a substance that plays a critical role in this. They are insulated by a white um, fatty substance called myelin. And what that allows um, for is efficient communication of these signals. You're literally thinking slower if, if your white matter isn't well insulated. That's absolutely right. Simon's research suggests that these well-insulated pathways and fast communications are something that clever brains, like Bobby's, have in common. Perhaps this can help explain why Bobby is so quick on the buzzer. Um, Albert Einstein. Correct. 